I think um, DS106 is, is a, a kind of an amazing model of what's possible when you approach a class um, with a really open mind and how to make teaching and the cl whole class experience kind of deeply relevant to students and to whomever wants to participate and be a part of that community. To me, um, digital storytelling is not about the technology. It's about understanding the requirements and then selecting which technology to use. So it was all about the story. So from that perspective, you sit down and, and you try to teach people, okay, what's the story you want to convey? And then once they understand the story they want to convey, then you can select the best technology to convey it in. So unlike Jim and Martha Burtis, who take a more technology approach, um, I take it totally from a storytelling approach. Whether or not DS-106 can play into the larger roles of what is education, and certainly STEM and science, technology, engineering, math, those, those are all huge and vital things, but the liberal arts grounding, the types of things that Mary Washington focuses on, those can be applied to any field. I think that funding STEM, just STEM, is absolutely a terrible idea because I think that you can't have the science, science, technology, you know, engineering and math without having the creativity that comes along with, you know, the humanities and the, um, arts and all that other stuff. I think um, the DS-106, you know, I mean, it falls into like the technology part, I think, because, you know, it does use a lot of technology, but um, DS-106 is all about making art. The idea for me is students have their own space online where they think about and interrogate that digital landscape. The digital landscape is something we exist within now. I hope DS-106 provides an opportunity for them to interrogate A, where their data lives, who controls it, and how does that frame in some ways their notion of privacy. Okay, if you think about it, you're touched by digital technology. You know, five years ago you wouldn't be doing this through a SLR camera, right? You'd have to have this video camera that's separate from an SLR. Technology continues to change, and it is the sort of the underpinning of a lot of the way we communicate now. The better we can prepare the next generation in that digital age, in understanding not only the complexities of being able to communicate in it using these tools, to truly communicate an idea really does take thought and forethought in how you present that idea in a virtual environment. When they wanted to offer more than one section, and they said, okay, they approached Jim and said, you know, Jim, could you do it? I took DS-106 with the man, the myth, the legend of Jim Group. I've referred to it casually and even in some context more formally as almost cult-like um, or more as a movement. And I don't mean that to be critical at, at all. I mean it to be cult-like cult in the sense that uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space is... is a cult movie. I mean, I mean it is more in that sense than in the, in the sense that uh, Jim Groom is leading his minions off a cliff somehow. So some people who took the class the first round were basically taking eight or nine predefined assignments that I came up with, and you have to do this. And as the class is being taught right now, there are no predefined assignments. There's a, pen, a bank of 200 assignments in a repository that anyone can do. And if you don't like any of the assignments, you can uh, submit your own and do that. What I think is is that there's classes of tools that rise to the top that depending on your proficiency you can utilize fairly easily and you don't need Final Cut Pro if all you're gonna do is put together some family videos for your your DVD. The way that I set up my blog was um, I decided to look at Worth 1000 which is a photoshopping primarily photoshopping website and I looked at different um, prompts, and then I would pick ones that I liked, and I would just do them. And my final project was I, I photoshopped Jim Groom as a man baby, which was ridiculous. Um, and I can't believe that I got an A in a class where I got to do that. DS-106 is not easy, and it challenges students in ways that, in, in many cases, and I think it's unfortunate, they haven't been challenged before. And I had students who were really put off by the notion that I would ask them to um, learn a technology or explore a technology or a tool without, well first of all, without in some cases myself being an expert, which I was very honest with them about, 
but also without giving them sort of instructions. Um, and what I did was much more general in terms of talking to them about the about the possibilities of those tools and those technologies, but refusing to kind of give them a play-by-play. -play. And students kind of come back and sometimes are rather frustrated by that. And what I say to them is, you know, I can give you step-by-step -step instructions today, but next week they could change. Or next week you could decide that you want to use a slightly different tool. Or um, next week there could be something new out there that, that does, that does things that aren't, weren't possible today. And not only could that happen, it will happen. Whatever reason students have for investing in digital tools, learning how to make a GIF, let's say, I mean, that's a simple kind of task on the one hand, but the, the, the processes and the platforms you have to work your way through in order to understand what you're doing when you make a GIF, I think are pretty significant. I think ultimately for all, the, all of my coursework, whenever I require students to code something or, or decode something or, or build something. It's all about understanding more about this world that we take for granted and that this, that students and anyone else who doesn't uh, think too hard about it. I, I mean, I, I've often said the uh, less we know about the platforms we use, the, we use, the more power they have over us. Rethinking teaching and learning is at the core of what I hope DS-106 would accomplish. There's a lot of problems with the internet. There's a lot of problems with the colonization of the internet by corporations. A lot of problems with the ideas of privacy, total awareness about everything we're doing, us freely giving away all our information, giving it away to an advertising company called Google. I mean, there are big issues that we have to deal with, and I hope DS-106 is one place that's not pedantic about that, or preachy, or kind of ideological, but is also kind of like, hey, you know, this is a battlefield. You know, teaching people how to think and how to reflect is immensely important and something we, a lot of times, education gets broken down to have you memorize this fact, not do you have this conceptual understanding that you can apply in a variety of different ways. And a lot of problems in K-12 and even in higher ed tend to be what they call tame problems, right? Tame problems have a specific answer. You're right or you're wrong. You know, it's it's like math problems a lot of times. You know, this is the answer. There's no, there's not a whole lot of ways you can get to it. It's just the answer. And then there's this idea of like wicked problems, which are like, I don't know, is there even an answer? You know, it's really hard, and you have to think through all this stuff. And and even evaluating whether or not they're right is much more involved. I teach new topics like digital storytelling, and they attract me because. I learn from them. Okay, in my exploration of understanding 106 and doing it the way I wanted to do it, I gained a better appreciation and in depth on how to construct a story, how to do a storyboard, and those types of things. Um, and so it, it's sort of a two way street. Um, I feel like I'm not just a spectator in the internet, but I can like actually take part in what's going on. So I, I have the, the know how and the tools to actually. Um, if I want to take part in the conversation um, of like memes or you know make a video, then I have that. So I feel like I'm more of an active citizen of the internet than before. Um, I'm gonna start a small business. It's going to be it's called OccupyTransphobia.com, and it's um, we're gonna sell T-shirts that say Occupy Transphobia, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and I think it's gonna go really well. And, and what was really cool about it was that I thought about it. 3 p.m. and then by midnight I more or less had a working site and that definitely wouldn't have worked if I hadn't had your class. For the future of DS-106, I would say, uh, and it's already started this semester, is that it's not about Mary Washington anymore. It's that any, uh, any professor that wants to run a course through the DS-106 website can. And so we had Michael Branson Smith, who's a professor up at CUNY in New York, uh, he ran a digital storytelling course through it, and Professor Scott Lockman in Japan, in Tokyo, actually ran a course through there. And the nice thing about that is I subscribe to the main feed, which is a lot of information, and a lot of times I'm skipping through a lot of it, but now I'm seeing course content from courses that aren't even happening here at Mary Washington. And it's from whole subsets of groups who have an like entirely different focus, but the core things are still there. I think this class is, for me, a model of liberal arts as it should be. DS-106 is a vital community of encouragement for creativity. 
Gefällt mir.